Uh, first of all, I want to just say that uh, I am not a PhD. I am a PhD candidate. So hopefully I'll have that done uh, here within the next year, year and a half. So uh, one of the things that um, I like to uh, talk about is um, how we can mimic Mother Nature. And I'm having a little bit of difficulty. It doesn't seem like I can move, so I'm going to let you guys move it. Let's go to the next slide. So we want to mimic Mother Nature uh, with the application of manure. And when I talk to regulators, I like to remind them that, you know, in the early 1800s, we had over 60 million buffalo in the United States. And, and the, the question I like to often ask is, did they stop eating or pooping in the wintertime? And of course they didn't. And, and did we have a water quality problem? So um, as far as we know, we had pretty good water quality back then. I think there's a few lessons we can learn from uh, the buffalo. First, you need to apply the manure to a live crop. Second, if we apply low rates, and uh, we've already heard many of our speakers talk about that. And then really third is proper uh, management of that grass, uh, uh, those, those buffalo rotational grays. So if we go to the next slide, and if you look at uh, this grass, uh, you can see that uh, in in one case, we have a lot of roots, and in another case, so we have very few. So I'm reminded uh, several years ago, uh, there, there was a report that came out that said 45% of the phosphorus is coming off of grazed land, and that confused me until I saw this slide. In a lot of cases where we have uh, very little top growth, we'll get about 50% top growth, 50% uh, below ground growth, and if you have you know, the grass is overgrazed, you're not going to have very many roots there. Uh, we, we need to think about how we manage not only the cover crops but all, all of our plants. So the more roots we have, you have to remember, live roots absorb soluble nitrogen, soluble phosphorus. Next slide. So if we look at uh, uh, some concepts on eco-farming where we're using no-till and cover crops, we hear a lot about no-till, how the macropores move that water through the soil very quickly. So I like to think of them as super highways. But if we can move that water from a macropore to a micropore to a biopore, uh, we can actually use the roots there uh, where we have the cover crops, and they can actually absorb a lot of this nitrogen, and they can slow down uh, the, the, the water so that uh, we have time for that mineralogy. The soil acts as a, a very good filter of these nutrients. So between the mineralogy and live plants, we can absorb a lot of soluble nutrients, especially nitrogen and phosphorus. Next, next slide. So as we look at um, uh, what we've done when we do intensive tillage, we tend to get these hard pans or a plow pan there. Uh, here we're going down uh, 20 centimeters or about uh, 8 inches. And uh, that gives us less soil volume to work with. Where we have continuous no-till, and of course my goal is to have uh, continuous living cover out there, we have this network of uh, biopores uh, that uh, will slow that water down and give it time that we can uh, actually absorb uh, some of that nitrogen and phosphorus. So it's, it's uh, retention time. The longer we can retain that water in, uh, in the soil, the, the better uh, we can uh, absorb some of that nitrogen and phosphorus. Next slide. So uh, as we look at some of the data, Soil organic matter is extremely important. On average, we've lost about 50 to 60 percent of our soil organic matter uh, from our soils. Uh, if you look at a sandy soil, um, it, it may have anywhere from one to two and a half um, uh, store one to two and a half inches of water, but it really depends on the amount of soil organic matter. So the higher the soil organic matter, what this slide shows is that uh, soil organic matter and available water holding capacity per inch. Uh, inches of water per one foot of soil. So a sand will go from one to two and a half. A silt loam can go from uh, uh, almost two to four. Uh, and a silty clay loam can go from 1.4 to 3. Again, as you increase that soil organic matter, you can uh, really store more water and have uh, more chance to treat it. Next slide. It's also related, uh, though, to uh, how fast the water is moving. So the faster the water is moving, uh, it's actually exponential, so it goes up two to the six ton uh, power. So uh, if I double the speed of water, I can actually uh, uh, 
carry 64 times more nutrients. So going from one to two mile per hour is 64 times more nutrients uh, that uh, uh, that water can hold. Some of our streams are actually moving now at 16 to, to close to 30 mile per hour. Uh, we see a lot of flashiness there. And so that's over a thousand times more nutrients. The good thing about the cover crops and the live plants is they slow that water down and uh, then they'll drop their load. Next slide. If we look at where nutrients are extracted, majority of them are extracted in that uh, top couple of inches. So that's where we want to put the manure as much as possible. Uh, and uh, the deeper we get that manure in the soil, if we inject it too deep, uh, the closer we are to uh, some of our subsurface uh, drains. So again, uh, over 40%, generally uh, at least on corn, 40% of it's going to be taken up within that uh, top six inches. So we want to think about root structure and uh, where that manure needs to be applied. Next next slide. So what, what cover crops to use? Uh, there's, a, there's a number of different ones. We have grasses versus brassicas versus legumes. Uh, the nice thing about the grasses, they tie up uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. They have very fibrous root systems. Uh, most of them live, uh, live year-round. One of the best cover crops we have to tie up uh, manure is oats, but the problem with oats are they, they generally die uh, in the winter. Brassicas uh, also take up uh, uh, a lot of manure, they, they can take up a very high concentration of nitrogen, uh, but again, some of those brassicas, especially the radish, uh, radishes, will die when it gets to be about uh, 15 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Legumes uh, already make their own nitrogen, but they will readily absorb uh, uh, free nitrogen if it's out there. So in, in many cases, we may uh, decide to put out a, uh, a mixture, but if we are going to put out a mixture, we would really heavily lean towards some of the grasses because they, they tend to do maybe just a little bit better job for us. So again, as we look at some of the different types of cover crops, next slide. Um, we're looking at the grasses. Some of the ones that, that uh, we like to use are cereal rye, triticale, annual ryegrass, barley, uh, wheat. Uh, again, oats is probably one of the best ones, but it depends on what time of the year. If you're going into the winter, uh, the oats can uh, die off. The sorghum, both, uh, the sorghum and uh, most of the millets are summer annuals, so they will die with the first frost. On brassicas, uh, radishes are commonly used. However, those radishes get a very big root, and they uh, can uh, cause uh, almost like preferential flow. They're going to move that uh, nutrients when they decay uh, could move those nutrients, uh, lose them uh, very quickly. So you have turnips. Uh, some of the ones that will survive the winter are kale and rape. And then the legumes, there's a number of different legumes. Uh, again, we probably want those to be a fairly small amount of the uh, mixture because uh, they do make their own nitrogen uh, and they do tend to have tap roots that uh, will, will move that manure uh, down uh, quite deep. Next slide, uh, you can see some of the nitrogen uptake. Uh, this was a study we did at Ohio State state, uh, annual ryegrass had uh, anywhere from 5 to 5.3 percent nitrogen in the tissue. We had 4 to 4.5, 50 pounds of, of uh, nitrogen being recycled. Cereal rye had 4 to 4.5 percent nitrogen in the tissue or about 350 to 400 pounds of nitrogen. And of course the Dacon radish, they had the highest uptake, but again they also had the fastest release because uh, they can, uh, uh, they will decompose uh, once it gets cold. Next slide shows uh, uh, probably what we'd like to say is an award-winning uh, uh, radish. This is Dave Brandt, uh, who, who raises a lot of radish. Again, the problem with the radish is uh, they take up a tremendous amount of nutrients, uh, very efficient, but uh, since they don't survive the winter, uh, in most cases, uh, they can release it. So on the next slide, we're looking at the amount of fall soil nitrate after manure application. Uh, this was an average of 24 tests over seven field sites. You can see where we had no cover. We had 21.3 parts per million nitrogen compared to where we had the oil seed radish. Uh, we had 6.5 in, in, in the soil. So those radishes take up a lot of, of nutrients. However, again, uh, they can be an issue uh, going into the winter if, if uh, when they die. What are the best cover crops? Next slide. For uh, manure uptake, uh, again, oats and radish are probably the best ones if you're applying in the, uh, in the summer. 
uh, early fall. But if you're going to, if you want those nutrients to uh, tie over into uh, the winter and through the spring months, you can see the ones that we have starred. Uh, that means that they generally survive the winter. Cereal rye, annual ryegrass uh, are uh, uh, have some of the the best root structures and take up a lot of, of nutrients. Uh, Wheat and barley can also take up nutrients, but they're not don't have near the root structure that cereal rye or annual ryegrass. For the brassicas, we have kale and rape. Uh, you can see the turnips and the radish; uh, they generally will die out. And then all the uh, the uh, legumes we have: winter peas, crimson clover, red clover, sweet clover, hairy vetch. Uh, cow peas is one that is a, an, an annual summer annual, and that will die out. Next crop, uh, as you can see here, uh, this is a slide where we had annual ryegrass and uh, we can get tremendous growth. Uh, these grasses take up a, uh, a lot of manure here is where we applied 6,000 gallons of uh, swine manure and we got some tremendous growth uh, just within uh, 45 days. So again, the grasses have more of a fibrous root system and are very efficient at taking up manure nutrients. Next, next slide. Cover crops for uh, winter ap uh, application of manure. What do we want in a good cover crop? We want a live plant uh, to absorb both nitrogen and phosphorus. I prefer to see uh, fibrous root systems versus a tap root. Not that we can't do some mixtures, but you want to make sure that you have some that are going to survive that winter uh, and uh, have some of the fibrous, more fibrous root systems. We want something that will hold up the equipment in wet weather. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, especially on uh, livestock farms, uh, there's a forage possible possibilities of getting something out of that cover crop. It needs to be easy to kill, and then we don't want to have too many carryover problems for the next crop, either with insects, weeds, or uh, tying up those nutrients too long. So if we let those grasses grow too long in the spring, sometimes we can get some aliopathic effects, uh, or uh, they'll uh, uh, tie up that nitrogen and won't make it available to the next crop if they get too high of a carbon to nitrogen ratio. Next crop, next slide. Cover crops again for uh, manure, winter manure application. Uh, these are probably the the five best ones, uh, kind of in order: cereal rye, annual ryegrass. Sometimes with annual ryegrass, it can be a little tough to kill. Uh, and it can become a weed problem, the triticale, the barley, the wheat. Uh, if you're looking at mixtures, uh, don't want to put out too many of the radish, probably no more than a pound per acre at the most. Oats can be part of that mixture, and then uh, obviously we can put a few of the legumes in, but we don't want them to make up too much. Last uh, issue is uh, uh, some things that we might want to be a little bit concerned about is on very short pastures because we don't have the, the root growth there. Uh, we can get uh, a lot of uh, uh, either running off the surface or uh, even through preferential flow, we can get cracks in those those pastures. It's all about root growth. And then where we have alfalfa hay, because it has such a long tap root, uh, and especially on a mature alfalfa hay field, uh, they tend to be very leaky and sometimes those can uh, get into uh, uh, the tile line. So you have to be a little bit concerned. You have to pick your cover crops uh, in order to avoid some of these issues. So I think cover crops can really help us uh, uh, by adding that extra organic matter and uh, tying up some of these soluble nutrients.